G'day everyone, today we're going to be chatting about air conditioning. Now I know this seems like it's not the funnest thing, but it is important to most vehicles and most people want it in their car these days. Uh, so I think it's important to understand how it works and, and the fundamentals of, of why it might operate. Uh, the first thing to understand with anything like this is to go back to your high school science and understand that when you have a particular substance, you uh, basically have a triangle where you've got uh, pressure, temperature and volume and a substance at any particular point or any particular state will be a balance of those three things. So if you increase the pressure, you will consequently need to compensate with either temperature or volume. Uh, one way to understand that is really to think of something like uh, uh, water. If you are at a lower pressure, it will indeed boil more rapidly. If you are at a higher pressure, which is the same reason that your coolant system, for example, is pressurized, it will take a greater temperature to boil it off. Um, I've got a syringe here. If you don't, if you want to try this out, go and buy a two cent syringe, uh, fill it with a little bit of water, pull the pull the syringe, and you will indeed see water boil at room temperature. Now, having said all of that, uh, I'm going to run through each of the components uh, and and how they operate. I'll also talk about uh, how I've actually fabricated the the AC hard lines in my system. Uh, what I went for is I went for vintage air. Uh, aluminium hard lines that I wanted to run everywhere. The main reason for that is that they are a smaller line than your uh, rubber equivalent uh, and we are pretty tight on space here. It also looks far neater and I think in a car like this it's just a, a, a lot nicer install. Uh, the only caveat to all of that is that I wasn't able to run hard lines everywhere. I wasn't able to get a uh, service port, which is basically the port that you use for vacuuming the system and then putting the refrigerant into the system. You have one on either side of your compressor uh, because otherwise obviously there's a valve in the system and you wouldn't be able to completely evacuate or charge the system properly. Uh, but I am going to use a rubber a rubber hose just from the hard line to the compressor and from the compressor to the other hard line. Uh, that's a necessity, but it's also nice because what it will do, it will provide some vibration isolation within the system. So uh, that's how it is. I'm going to try and give it a bit of a crash course and try and keep it as brief as possible, but give it an overview that's going to going to meet requirements. Uh, when you are doing hard lines, you will indeed need some equipment. Uh, these are about 30 bucks a pop. Uh, or you can spend about 120 bucks to try and get one that does sort of all sizes. You probably won't find one that's going to do all three sizes of hard refrigerant line that you need. You will need three sizes. Uh, but uh, these are basically just a tube bender. You can't use a pipe bender. A pipe bender is designed for thick wall tube and it will just simply kink thin wall tube. Uh, so yeah, this is the mid-size one that I used. Uh, this is the smallest one that I used. This is actually just out of my brake line bending kit. Uh, I use the same process. Uh, and this is the large one that I use. Uh, the larger tube is infinitely harder to work with and you can't just sort of uh, even do some minor bends by hand. Uh, the smaller tube is a lot easier to work with. So if you are designing it, I'd suggest try and work out a system where you can uh, sort of make the, the easy route with your big lines uh, to your compressor if that's possible and uh, and do all the, the tricky shit with your, um, with your, with your small line. Anyhow, uh, other than that, I'll just give you a quick overview of all of the piping and uh, just give you a bit of an idea of uh, where we're running it here. So we've got it running from the evaporator through to the condenser, condenser to your receiver dryer and then back again. Uh, when you are ordering these lines, obviously you need to make an estimate of length because they come in a standard, uh, standard length and then you need to sort of uh, work back from there. If there is anything that you can do wrong, it's to uh, not have enough length. Uh, that's pretty much the problem in most blokes' lives, let's face it, uh, but always try and opt for a little bit longer. Uh, if you look at this as the final connection here, uh, the reason I left it off is because you're thinking, oh shit, it's too long. Well, what you can do is you can just add a bit more bend to this, add a bit more bend to that, and then you'll actually take up that extra length and have it connect. And we're gonna be doing that in a space where no one can see it. It's still gonna be nice and tidy in the spaces where you can actually view it. So that's how all that works. Uh, make sure you are using the exact right size tube bender for the tube that you're using. Uh, this one here is actually a 12.7 mil tube. I only had a 12 mil tube bender and it kind of marred it and it looks a little bit shit and I'm probably gonna have to now order another bit of tube to re-bend that even though I spent a lot of time on it. So uh, look, we'll get into it. I'll show you how I do it. Uh, and other than that, obviously as always, drop all your questions, comments, criticisms, uh, Recommendations down below. Uh, you can follow along on Instagram at 105 Motorsport. Or 
All right, so now we understand what a refrigerant is and how we are going to be exchanging uh, the, the temperature, volume, or pressure to get what we want to do. Uh, I'm going to run through the system here and explain how, the, how it works and what each of the components do. So we're going to have our compressor up here. It's going to be taking low pressure gas from the evaporator coil and turning it into a high pressure gas. It is then going to flow through the bigger tube here, up to the top of the condenser, into the top of the, the radiator here at the front, which we call a condenser, and it's gonna flow along here. As it flows along here, it's gonna cool, and just like the water on the outside of your beer glass, it's going to go from a gas, which in the case of the beer glass is just you know water in the air, uh, humidity if you want it that way, and it's gonna condense into a liquid. Then it's gonna settle in the bottom of this condenser, and it's gonna run out the bottom tube, which is obviously smaller, still carrying the same volume of refrigerant, but it's a smaller tube needed because it's, it's a liquid, which is denser than the gas. It's gonna run along here as we sort of installed here, pop up here, hopefully be connected. Uh, and we're going to put it into this receiver dryer. You don't really need to worry about this piece of equipment other than to say it's effectively a filter and a high and low pressure switch out here which either enables the AC system, AC system or, or shuts it off. Uh, in the worst case to your system, this will also be used to, uh, you know, if you have a gas leak, it'll go low pressure and turn the system off. Or if it goes crazy for some reason and your compressor goes super high pressure, it will also switch the system out. Then we're gonna run through here. Uh, you want to make sure all of your lines in your cabin are, are insulated because otherwise you're going to have condensation on the lines and it will drip into your cabin. It runs along here up to this little thing here. Now this little thing here is called a linear expansion valve. Now what it is is it's effectively just a little needle valve and it just moves in and out uh, to regulate the or throttle the system operation in terms of the, the, the temperature that you're going to get here at your evaporator coil which is just another radiator. Now this little tube here that runs back into the, the linear expansion valve is what they call a capillary tube. Now there's just obviously whatever substance is in here and that's just sitting in there with the coil just, just hanging out there. And what it will do is as it heats up, obviously the little bit of gas in this will actually expand and that will either open or close your linear expansion valve. So that drops the pressure and with that drop in pressure it will change the liquid to a gas and it will then move into your evaporator coil, or at least it will change it from a low pressure, a high pressure liquid to a low pressure liquid. And then it will boil off in here as it gets, it sort of takes on all of the heat. If you think about it, you've got the liquid in here or, or, or whatever it is, and it's gonna be taking heat because it's cooling. The, the heat is flowing from the cabin into your evaporator coil. And then it's gonna be expanding the gas and expanding the gas and taking, and it's just taking all the heat out of your cabin because it's cooling it as you're blowing air through it. And then this high pressure gas through the big line, not a small line, now big line, we've gone from liquid to a, high, to a gas, a low pressure gas. And we're going to be then running back down here and running into your compressor. Your compressor then is gonna take your low pressure gas, turn it into a high pressure gas. Obviously we can't compress a liquid, so this is why it needs to be gas and why this system works. And then it's gonna force the high pressure gas back into your condenser, which is then gonna repeat the process. I hope that makes sense for everyone. Uh, just think about this as a throttle. This is your filter. This is the coil that gets rid of, like takes on heat from the cabin. And this is the, this is the coil that gets rid of heat. So that's how it, it all works. Uh, I hope that that is sort of something that people can understand more, or more simply um, and get your head around. Uh, but that's that's how it all sort of works. Uh, anyhow, if you have any questions, as always, just, just drop them down below. I always think that AC turns into a bit of a headache for people and they can't quite understand it. Uh, in this case, we're going to be having an enable signal just to turn a, an electric compressor on and off. There's no different with a difference with a mechanical compressor. The only difference is, is that the, the mechanical compressor will be clutch, it will switch a clutch to turn it in and out, uh, to, to uh, switch it in and out as a thing from turning the, the compressor as a whole on or off. Uh, that's, that's really the, the way that it all works. Um, I hope that helps people with their install uh, and, and I think these uh, lines have turned out quite well. One final note before I forget, uh, they're the service ports. This is the Renkel MD18 electric air, uh, electric air compressor, electric compressor I'm using. Uh, we can see here that the fitment is pretty tight, but it's come up really nice uh, with this fairly large uh, condenser at the front. And uh, that's the vintage air uh, soft line kit that I've used. And as you can see, I mean, that's an equivalent size, uh, I think whatever it is, 
size 12 tube. Uh, so you, you're talking about adding a fair bit of size uh, by the time you get all that together. Uh, I just bought the general kit for this uh, because I'll, I'll use this up on another car at some point. But you can just buy these fittings individually and indeed that would be the way to go if you're doing it as I have. Um, Cause you really just need uh, one of the, like, you know, a, an arbitrary fitting, a service port, and then a service port and another arbitrary fitting on the, on the other side. And that's it. Thanks very much.